Hello friends, this is Dheeraj Vaidya from wallstreetmojo.com. In the past few years, we have trained and mentored more than 100,000 students in financial modeling, investment banking, private equity, and other core finance domains. At the heart of such profile is the most important skill, and that is ratio analysis. If you master ratio analysis, trust me, you will do awesome in any of these profiles. Therefore, we have brought to you a full scale, step-by-step -step tutorial on ratio analysis. Here you will not only learn how to analyze the three statements, that is the income statement, balance sheets, and cash flows, but also how to apply this in the real world using a live company. But before you proceed, I must really warn you that this is going to be a very comprehensive video series as it is divided into more than 30 parts. But I can definitely promise to you that you will master this ratio analysis if you're ready to commit your time and focus. So do grab a cup of coffee, download the Excel sheet from the description link below, and let's get started. Let us now understand ratio analysis in a very intuitive way. And to do that, I have downloaded this 10K report. That's the annual report of Colgate from its investor relation website. So we have this uh, income statement in front of us and uh, all the dollars which are mentioned are in millions. So uh, basically just to look at how much is the turnover of Colgate, it is around $16.471 billion. So Colgate as such as a company is pretty big in size and it might be doing exceptionally well. So if you look at the income statement only, what we understand is we do only have the absolute numbers, right? net sales figures, cost of sales, you know, gross profit, etc. But to develop an intuitive understanding of how it has been doing over a period of years, whether 2020 was a better year as compared to 2019. And uh, to answer those questions, we will have to look at ratio analysis. Likewise, if we have to kind of compare things like, um, you know, how Colgate is doing vis-a-vis -vis Unilever as a competitor. So whether the uh, profit generated by Colgate per unit of sales is better than that of Unilever, those questions are basically answered by uh, ratio analysis. So ratio analysis is nothing but mathematical calculation of some ratios from the financial statements and uh, which help in you know, uh, a future understanding of the company as such and how it has been doing and how it might perform in the near future. So uh, for for the sake of understanding, I have actually downloaded this uh, and uh, populated this in the financials. So basically, if we have to define what is ratio analysis, it's nothing but a mathematical approach to calculate various financial ratios from not only just the income statement, but uh, balance sheets and cash flows of the company. And uh, these ratios are used to analyze uh, the company's financials and to gain insights about its operations and uh, primarily also to look at how it might perform in the near future. So before you move any further, I would request you to download this uh, Colgate Ratio Analysis case study. So there are two sheets basically which I would like you to download. The links are in the description box. So you need to go there and uh, download the case study. So there are two types of Excel sheets which you'll get access to. One is this unsolved case study, which will contain the financials of Colgate Palmolive for the year of 2016 to 2020, income statements, balance sheets, and cash flows. All right. So, and then the other sheet is basically the solved case study. The solved case study is nothing but uh, uh, not only this income statement, balance sheets, and cash flows will be there, but all the ratios calculated in a step-by-step -step method. So these ratios and its calculations, we'll be discussing it in detail, you know, one by one in each of these video series. So I want you to look at this unsolved case study and uh, start working on it as we discuss in our videos. And uh, at the end of the day, you will get this final solved case study. So you can always map and correlate, you know, how your answers are with respect to what the actual answers should be after following the videos. So th that's one thing which I wanted you to actually follow right now. Having said that, let's now look at uh, what is the ratio analysis framework and how it works. 
So here we have a typical ratio analysis framework. In our case study, Colgate will be deploying this same ratio analysis framework. But let's say if you are analyzing a different company, Starbucks or Unilever, etc., you can apply the same methodology or the framework to analyze your company. But uh, first and foremost, I would advise you not to get intimidated by the level of details which are there in this flowchart here, because we will be discussing each and every item in far more detail with calculations and applications and uh, you know limitations, etc. So uh, I'm just here right now giving you a top level analysis of how this framework works typically. So uh, when you look at this ratio analysis, uh, there are three, four bifurcations to look at. First is how to analyze the company's trends. So on the top, as you can see, there are things mentioned like vertical analysis, horizontal analysis, trend analysis. So basically what this does is uh, this helps you identify the right kind of questions, whether the company is growing or not, whether certain line items like uh, gross profits are shrinking or increasing. Likewise, you know, there are different ways of, you know, analyzing other aspects as well, which we'll discuss in company trends. Uh, solvency ratios, turnover ratios is basically used to understand how uh, the company is in terms of its uh, assets vis-a-vis -vis the liabilities from the point of view of short term. So uh, whether the current assets or the short term assets are uh, large enough to ensure that the short term liabilities can be paid for. So we look at solvency ratios in that context. Likewise, you know, turnover ratios, uh, the primary thing to look at is how fast the company is able to convert the inventory into finished goods and then uh, thereafter, you know, able to pay it to, uh, I mean, sell it to the customers and uh, receive cash from them. So we typically look at turnover ratios from that point of view. Operating efficiencies is, you know, how good the company is able to identify and uh, utilize its assets. So that is uh, what is covered in operating efficiencies. Operating profitability is the margins, you know, how much gross profit per unit of sales. And then there are other definitions of profits like operating profit. We also call it as EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes. Likewise, you know, when the margins are calculated on net profit, that is called as net margins. So there are other ratios like return on equity, return on total equity. We'll look at all of that. Uh, from you know analysis point of view whether the company is doing good next comes the operating efficiency basically the asset turnovers equity turnovers so uh, here uh, don't worry it basically means that how you are able to generate sales and uh, net income or profits vis-a-vis -vis your uh, utilization of uh, assets or, or the equity which you must have put in the company likewise uh, next is the operating profitability which typically talks about how well you are generating as a company the gross profits, operating profits and the net profit margins. So gross profit and operating profit, they're kind of very different. We'll be discussing all of that in much, much detail. Important thing to note here is that we also look at return on equity, ROE, the return on total assets, you know, how much the return is vis-a-vis -vis your total assets which you have deployed in the company. So these are like, all of them are operating profitability measures which we also look at and in addition we'll also look at the dupont roe so this is again a very comprehensive way of understanding how the return on equity is generated we'll be discussing all of that too next we have is the business risk and the financial risk so basically we try to understand whether the company has taken debt and how that debt or loan affects the income statement so uh, there are different ratios like the interest coverage ratios and the leverage ratios and debt service coverage ratios. We'll discuss that in more detail when we talk about these two risks. The external liquidity risk is nothing but how liquid the stock is when it is trading in the stock market. So there's this thing called bid and ask spread. So uh, that helps us understand how liquid the stock is. Liquidity risk from external point of view essentially means that how easy or difficult will it be for you to sell that stock or buy that stock without changing the price much and likewise you know how much is the trading volume which essentially means that how many shares are bought or sold on a daily basis so these are the liquidity measures which also helps us understand whether the company is is um, which you're buying is risky from a price share sensitivity point of view 
And last is basically the growth analysis where we look at how the company can essentially grow on a sustainable basis and uh, how the company has been growing over the years and whether that sustainable growth rate, the company will be able to sustain it or not. So that's basically the whole framework is all about. So having said that, let us now uh, look at, you know, how this ratio analysis framework fits into the comparative terms. Last we have is the growth analysis, which basically tells us how the company is able to generate its growth and whether the growth will be sustainable or on a year over year basis or not. So there are typical formulas to look at and we will also look at the limitations of that formula. So this is the overall framework through which ratio analysis is done and uh, we will be applying this framework on uh, our Colgate case study step by step on Excel. So please ensure that you have this Excel sheet which uh, we showed you earlier and uh, that's what we'll be working on. I hope you found this video to be useful. Please do like and share. And if you have any feedback or want to suggest a topic for any future video, then you may do so by writing about it in the comment section. Also, we come up with interesting videos on investment banking and core finance topics regularly. So if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do so by clicking on the subscribe button below so that you can get the notification about our latest videos. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a nice day.